Now, lambda is an Excel function that allows us to create a reusable function. However, we have to use it with the defined name feature. But Microsoft just announced seven new Lambda helper functions. Now, is omitted, we'll actually use that inside of Lambda. But the rest of these new functions allows us to use Lambda, not with the defined name feature, but in the actual worksheet. That means for the first time ever, Excel has the ability, like Power Query, to have a function value that we can use in the worksheet. Now let's first consider lambda. Let's imagine we have a start amount and an end amount, and we need to calculate percentage change. Well, we take the end amount divided by start and subtract 1. That's an easy formula. If we only have to use it once, of course we'd create it this way. But if we wanted to create a reusable formula, we use lambda. And lambda allows you to define a parameter or a formula input. Notice it says parameter or calculation. That start is going to be a parameter. There's another parameter. And when you're done with variables, then you get to create a formula using those variables. Now, when you test lambda in the worksheet, you actually add arguments just like we'll see after we paste this into the Define Names dialog box. So we're testing it to see if it works. And sure enough, it does. Now, Control F3 to open up Define Names. I've already clicked New and then created this, so I'll click Edit. And there it is. I just gave it a name and pasted it right there without the open and close parentheses. I also put a note here. Now, what this means is from now on, I can use this with open and close parentheses anywhere that I have a start and end amount. So when I click OK, this is how you use it. You type the name of the function, and there's that icon for define name. I hit Tab open parentheses, I enter start, comma, then end, close parentheses. When I control enter and copy it down, that define name function can be used anywhere in this workbook. Now the first of the seven functions that work with Lambda, this function doesn't actually hold Lambda. This is the only one of the new functions that can be used inside of Lambda. And here's the Lambda, the same thing we just did over here. But wait a second, our formula is huge now because we're going to check if one of the arguments is omitted. We use the ifs function, the logical test. I'm checking whether both the start and end is omitted. If it is, we'll deliver that message. If just the start is omitted, we'll deliver that message. And just the end, then that message. And with the ifs with an s function, you have to put true and then the final value. That's the only thing we used in the previous formula. Now I went ahead and put this up in define name. So now if we omit this by accident, there's our message. If we omit both, we get that message. And <clears throat> if just the end, we have messages for all three situations. So is omitted is the only one that goes in Lambda. All the rest of these, we put Lambda inside these functions. Now for the first three functions, by row, by column, and map, we have a Lambda function delivering a single value that will iterate over all the rows in the array, or all the columns in the array, or all the individual items in the array. And for each function, it delivers an array of results where by row delivers an array of rows, by column delivers an array of columns, and map delivers an array for every item in the original array. Scan and reduce run a lambda accumulator over an array, and scan delivers each intermediate accumulated value, where reduce gives you one single answer, which would be the last value from the scan array. And then finally, make array. You give it a scalar formula and tell it how many rows and columns, and it makes an array for you. Now we'll start by looking at by row, by column, and map, because they're very similar. Now here's a 3 by 3 table. And what if 
we wanted to spill the total results. Well, you just cannot use the sum function because it's an aggregate function that doesn't know how to go row by row. It just adds all the numbers. So anytime we have wanted to spill totals like that, in the past, we'd have to use Mamulta and matrix algebra. But now it is easy. Equals by row, because we want to go row by row through that array right there. And notice it says array. Now I type comma. It says function. That's where you put lambda. And we're not going to put this lambda up into define names dialog box. It works without that dialog box right inside of by rows. Now here's the cool thing. Lambda and by row, and in fact, lambda and all these functions work together. So we need to put a parameter that will allow us to go row by row through that array that sits in by rows. And it doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to call it r for row. But that R means it'll go row by row through that array, comma. And what do we want to do? We want to sum the R variable. Close parentheses. That's the calculation inside of Lambda. And it delivers a single answer for each row. Close parentheses. Oh, boy, is that annoying. I didn't want to register. I wanted an R. So that'll close on. Lambda, now I close on by rows. And when I hit Enter, I get to spill the totals for each row. Notice this is an array filled with rows. So by rows does technically deliver a column, but it's not. It's delivering an array of rows. Now, if we wanted to spill results at the bottom of each column, well, we could use Mamult in matrix algebra. But conceptually, it seems easier to say, hey, please by column. Go through that array. And I have to use lambda because it's working with by column. And I'm going to call the variable or the parameter c. And then we just say, hey, please sum c. That's the calculation in lambda. I close off lambda. And there is the copyright sign. I should turn off automatic autocorrect. And then I close off by columns, and bam, there's the spilled totals for each column. Now, whereas by rows goes through this array row by row, and column does column by column, if we switch over to map, and this is going to be a silly formula, there it is, the same array. But this lambda, and I called it array here, we can put whatever calculation we want here, and it does it to each item in the array. And what makes map different than by column and by row is it delivers an array the same size as the original array. Now, if I was in the worksheet, I would never do it this way because that's how easy it is. But if we go over to the sheet map, uh, Excel Magic Trick 1748, that was the last magic trick I did. And we had to build a sales report based on four product names. And we had to simulate a relationship between two tables. And I did a few formulas, which were fine. But if we use map or by rows, the formulas calculate faster. So if I hit F2 here, there's the array that the lambda here is going to iterate over. And that formula calculates faster than the traditional array formulas using some product or filter. Now, we used map here, but notice this is just rows. So map and rows work exactly the same if the array is only filled with rows. Now, in the comments under 1748, there was a bunch of formulas posted. And I timed them and posted. The comment is pinned to the top. Excel Lambda actually had the fastest formula. And he didn't use by rows. He used by columns. Now, here's another example for the map function. Now, up here, map and by row worked on a single column filled with rows. So they basically both do the same thing. But if we have one, two different columns that we want to work some calculation across and spill the results, that's where map comes in. Now, this is a logical test. We're using these conditions here to test each row. And if you want to use the AND function, you have to put the formula in the cell and copy it down because it cannot spill results. It only delivers a single answer or a scalar answer. So in this case, we can use map. We put in one array and then a second array. 
then the lambda function, we have to use some variable to refer to both of these arrays, CR and GPA. And then in the last argument, we can use a scalar and function. And map will take it, run across the two arrays, and spill the results. Now, what if we wanted to spill some Boolean values before we had map? Well, we'd run the logical test as an array formula. And this would spill, but it would give us ones and zeros. So then we'd put it inside of if. All right, let's go look at another example on the sheet by rows, because here's my favorite new example for by rows. In finance, we have to analyze portfolio returns and the risk for a particular portfolio of stocks. And risk is assessed by standard deviation. So we have stock A and B. That's the weights for the two stocks in the portfolio. And this is the probability of a particular economic state. And we have all of these intermediate steps that we have to calculate, then calculate variation. And then when we take the square root, we get the standard deviation. But in finance, we don't want all these intermediate calculations. We want a single cell array formula. Now, one of these calculations right there involves taking three rows by two columns and multiplying it by one row by two columns and getting a single column of results. Notice there's three rows. Well, matrix algebra is how we used to do it, but much easier. I can't believe we have by row. We simply give it that array, 3 by 2, and there's the lambda to run over it. R, that means for each one of these rows, that lambda and R will pick out 1, 2, 3 rows, and then multiply it by what? That row. Now, guess what? That is an array calculation. But because we're adding it, we get a single answer for each row and our three row resultant array. So that's my favorite example for so far for by rows. Now let's go look at the last few functions. Now scan and reduce functions are accumulators. So for example, if we have a column of counts, we might want to get a running total, which means the accumulator would add 15, to get 15, 15 and 8, or really what the function is going to do is take the accumulated value so far and add 8 to get 23, then 23 plus 5 to get 28, 28 plus 4 to get 32. So scan will iterate and accumulate some values, whereas reduce, it does exactly the same thing, but it only accumulates to get the final answer. Now, if we look at scan for creating a running total by adding, we have an initial value of 0. There's the array. And the function, the first variable is the accumulator. That represents each item in this array. And then the final argument is the formula, the accumulator plus each intermediate value in the array. Now, this delivers the running total, one for each row. But if we use the exact same formula, but change from scan to reduce, then this function iterates, but it only delivers the single final result. Now, how do we do a running total spilled in the old days? Well, we use subtotal offset and row. And how do we create reduce in the old days? We use the sum function. Now, I haven't found a lot of good uses for reduce. But our pal, XL Lambda, he said, don't worry. In the upper echelon of array formulas, there's going to be some awesome use for reduce. So more to come. Now, if you want to use scan to iterate and then accumulate using multiplication, you have to start at 1 and use the multiplication operator. 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 8 is 120, and so on. We can also join, but the initial value has to be a zero length text string, double quote, double quote, with nothing in between it. That represents text with zero length. And we use the join operator. Don't, don't ever, don't ever not, don't ever not use, don't ever not use Excel. Now, the last new helper function is make array. You tell it how many rows and columns you want in the array. And then you use lambda. And the two variables are row and column that relates to those. And then whatever formula you want, 
And the funny thing is, this formula doesn't relate to the variable r or c. It's just a single formula that will be used to generate a value in each cell. And the results spill. Before make array, well, we'd use the same formula. And then in probability, we use rand array. Now, there's another way to use make array. If you tell it two rows and two columns, you can actually use the row and column in the formula. And it simply says whatever the row position is times whatever the column position is. This is one row by one column, one row by two columns, two rows by one column, and two by two. Before we had make array, that's how we do that formula. All right, that was a lot of fun with the seven functions. Make array, reduce, scan, map, by columns, maybe my new favorite, by rows, and is omitted. All right, I want to hear what you guys think in the comments. And don't forget to click that thumbs up, and we'll see you next video. Bye.